Hi everybody, it's Deb from D&D Art Gallery. Today I have a 12 by 12 inch canvas and I'm going to just do a simple uh, dirty pour on it. I'm doing this for all you beginners out there. Um, this is one of the easiest pours you can do. And um, what I'm going to do is go over my paints and my pouring medium and then I'm going to stop my camera and put down my base coat, get my cup ready, and then I'll bring you back. So my base coat today is going to be Liquitex Basics Unbleached Titanium. Liquitex Basics Phalo Blue. Liquitex Basics Turquoise Blue. Artist Loft. Metallic Leaf Green, Blick Relic Bright Red, and my last two paints are from Montmart, and they are the Vermilion, and the last one is Yellow Mid. I picked these paints especially to let the beginners know that you don't have to go out and buy very expensive paints. These are all mid-range paints that I'm using, the Liquitex Basics, the Artist Loft, the Montmartre, and the Blick. You can get those for a pretty reasonable price. Okay, my pouring medium today is I am using the mix, and you use seven parts of the mix with one part of the paint. And then I added about four drops of water to that to thin it down a little bit. And let me show you consistency. I'll use the vermilion. Just leaves a little trace. Not much. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So I will bring you back in a minute after I get my base coat down and my cup filled. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I've put down my base coat of the um, Liquitex Basics Unbleached Titanium all over on the sides, the corners. I filled my cup. Let me show you my cup. Sometimes I pour down the side of the cup. This time I poured all across. I got two layers of each color. And what I did is I started with the lightest color and then I moved up to the darkest color. I did two layers of that and then I did put the, um, the unbleached titanium on top. Now I want to just take a second to talk about pouring mediums. I use the mix. The mix is a little bit on the expensive side. Um, if you are trying to save money, what you can use is um, Elmer's glue wall. It's uh, cheaper than the mix. And what you do is you can either add 70% Elmer's glue wall, 30% water, or if you find that's a little um, thick, you can use 60% of the Elmer's glue wall and 40% of water. When I use the glue, I also use a product called GAC 800, and it's made by Golden, and that helps the paint from not cracking. Sometimes I find with using the glue, my paint would crack if I had it too thick. So those are just a few of the options. Okay, let's get started. And I'm just going to do a dirty cup pour. And I'm just going to pour right down the middle. See what we get here today. You can see those colors that I used. And there's that yellow coming out last. OK, 
Okay. Now what you can do if you're not real satisfied, if you make a little ring in the at the end like I did in the center, you can take your skewer and you can just kind of fix that a little bit before you start tip, tipping. And let's give this a torch before I start tipping. You can see I've, I've already got some cells popping up here. And I did not add any silicone. I just did mix this paint so there probably is more air bubbles than normal. If you mix your paint the day before or the night before, you are more likely to get less air bubbles when you go to pour. Okay, let's just start to tip here. And one thing you can do is you can really take your time when you do your tipping. You don't have to hurry, especially if there's an area that you really like the paint colors or the effects you're getting and you want to try and save it. You can maneuver your canvas with the paint in certain ways to try and, and achieve that. This is really not the case here today. I like doing simple pours on Fridays just because it's the end of the week. And I just want to really enjoy enjoy the, the whole process. Now I'm going to bring that back into the center. And that's what you want to do with the pour like this. Is after you go and take care of a corner, you can bring it back into the center. I'm going to get this corner now and bring it back. Also by bringing it back, you can see how you're stretching out certain lines and you may like that effect. You may decide later on you even want to stretch it more. And get off it can get rid of a, another part of the painting because you don't really like that area just getting the paint off this corner now and I'll bring that back and when I say bring it back I'm bringing it back into the center not necessarily having to have that paint in the center when you're all finished, but during the process, bring it back. Now I'm just stopping and taking a look at it here, assessing what I like so far. And what I do like is up in here, this red, it's lacing all around in between the green and the blue here. And it's very pretty up in here, so I'll see what I can do with that. I'm going to take care of this corner. Now, if you've, if you've watched someone also call something negative space, this is what's negative space, where you haven't, you haven't tilted your other paint over it. You're going to leave it plain. That's what you'll see a lot of the artists calling negative space. Okay, and I'm going to bring that back. And 
and I'm right away going to take a little more off of this corner down here because I, I don't care that much for that corner. And I have a lot of paint on this canvas so I can afford to pull some more paint off. And now I'll, I'll bring it back into the center. And I'm going to take a look at it. At this point, you can either torch it or what I do is I look at my corners, see if I have to add a little paint. What you want to do is find paint from that area that matches that. Cover your corners. It's kind of hard for me to see these far corners, but I will. Just match that paint to that area. You can also take a little tool such as this and you can clean off the bottom. That way you're cleaning off the paint and it won't pull your paint that's on your canvas down any further. Okay, that's pretty good. Got most of my paint off the bottom. Okay, now I'm just kind of looking at this and I'm going to torch it one more time. You can go back later on, not like within an hour and you can torch again because as your painting sits, more air bubbles will come to the surface and you can pop them. I'm just going to take another look at this painting. There's a lot going on. I'm really happy with I'm really happy with everything that's going on in this painting. I may just tilt it a little bit more this way. But I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm going to get you down for a close-up. Again, this is a 12 by 12 inch canvas that I did a dirty cut pour on. And here is the upper left hand corner and this is what I like about using the mix those stripes are very crisp and they stay that way while it dries also I'm just going down the left hand side here very pretty in here those stripes turned out very very nice We'll take up the middle you can see some of that the red how it's going around all those little cells and I'll take you over here to the upper right hand corner and down the right hand side this is a really pretty area in here. And this is the lower right hand corner. I want to show you that my favorite spot though is this right here. I just love the way the red stayed so vibrant in there with all the other colors. So very pretty. Okay, so let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it.
Make sure you ring the bell, choose all, so you know the next time that I do post a new video. And subscribe if you haven't, that would really help me out. And I want to thank all of my subscribers and my watchers again. You're really helping my channel grow and I appreciate it. If you have any questions about this pour at all, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. Until next time, take care everybody. Bye for now.